So one of the questions then becomes, since we've been working with IP addressing in the fourth octet, what about an IP address in the third octet? For example, 192.168.0.0, but instead of our subnet mask being 255.255, let's change this to 128.0. That means the first two numbers are locked in, but the third and fourth octet, we can manipulate those. So like we've done before, let's go ahead and break down our 128 into binary. So that would be 128 binary, 1000000. Zero, 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 zero. And again, if you're not sure how we do that, revisit the video on binary to decimal conversions. And again, that will be dot zero 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 zero. That is our subnet mask that we can play with. We go to our first one going that way, or our last one going from that way, and that's that guy right there. And that is in the one, two, four, eight, sixteen, thirty-two, sixty-four. That's in the one twenty-eight spot. So what that means is we can manipulate the third octet and our groupings are going to be in 128 bit chunks. So let's go into our chart. We always start with zero and then we increment by our grouping size. But the next one, if we add 128, 128, that's 256. And we know we can't do that because these are groups of 8 bits. And we know that the highest number we can go is to 255. So this is our start or our network ID. This is going to be our end slash our broadcast. So, what is one number less than 128.0? Remember from our videos from before, how we do the addition and how we do the subtraction. What we can do is we can take this number, 128 minus 1, and that becomes 127. What do we do with these guys? That one's going to have to trickle all the way down. So all of these will change to ones. We will change this one to a zero, and all the ones preceding it will become zero. So this is the most confusing part for most people. Why is the end result, or the end range for this, 127? Dot 255. Keep in mind 192 and 168 are still there, we're just not writing them for cleanliness, cleanliness sake. Why is that? So, I want to draw a line. Let's take 127.255 and let's add one. We can't add that one here. So what we can do is if we do all of these change to zero, then the one comes over to 128 or 127. 127 plus one is 128. Just like in decimal, when you're learning how to do anything with the decimal, if we have 0.9 and we add 0.1. This example is in decimal. We don't get 0.10. We get 1.0. Same concept here. So what would our end or our broadcast be for a second network? We know it's going to end with 255. 
but what's going to be our end number? Is it also going to be 255? It should be. So now let's talk about our range. What would our range be? Because now we have 0, .0. .0. What's the next number? Remember, we have to accommodate for every number. And it's very common to do that. That's not correct. We need to add for every number, including for all the addresses for 192.168.0.1.2.3. With the third octet being zero still. Through. What's one number less than 127.255? It is not 126.255. It is 127.254. That's where we're taking that one bit from the very last octet. That way we can, can accommodate all of the numbers. If we add one here, it goes to that guy. If we add one here, it goes to that guy. Again, we're wanting to accommodate for every possible number. What about the next example? 192, 168, 128.0. What's the first number past that? That's going to be 128. Point one through through what? That should be through 192, 168, 255.254. Good again, if we add one, we'll get 255.255. Normally working in the third octet, this is going to be one of the hardest things to deal with. This is a time and practice thing. So it's just getting examples of it. So that is our basics for subnetting in the third octet. I will do a few other videos so we can make sure that we're getting our examples down. Thank you.